It's funny how things hit you sometimes. When editing this Legends video, I found myself thinking about my life and how many, many times I've let God down. And I can't help but wonder how many people see stories of faithfulness and they think, that's not me, I'm not good enough. The truth is, we aren't. No one is. But this story isn't about how good we are. It's not about our faithfulness. This is his story, told through the life and lens of Robbie and Londa Fairclough. I first heard of Robbie Fairclough when we were in, when I was in junior high school. I, one of my good friends was his girlfriend, and she would come to my house to spend the night, and they would talk on the phone. So that's how I learned about Robbie Fairclough. I first met Londa at YMCA camp. We started dating when I was in high school, or we were in high school, and dated through high school into college. So. I was a grade ahead, even though he's a month younger than, older than I am, and he broke his foot playing football. So that really brought us together because I was working on the homecoming float for the SGA. We were stuffing tissue in the chicken wire around the homecoming float. Well, here he comes on his crutches to help because he couldn't play football. He was out of practice for a while. So that's how we met. We started stuffing tissue in the homecoming floats. I thought I had the prettiest girl in town, so I had no idea. Oh, it's sweet. <laughs> and he was so cute. <laughs> we would sit on the couch, watch television with my family. Uh, we would sometimes go to the movie or the show. We would go to the Dairy Queen. And she would want to eat my french fries that she said she didn't. I said, do you want me to order you some french fries? No, no. But she ate half of mine, so you know how that goes. Most of the time we were at our house, my house, I would cook dinner for him and he would come over and eat. I learned one time he did not like uh, sweet, and sweet and sour, sour pork yeah. and egg fried rice. Spent all Saturday afternoon working and he was very honest with his feelings. Do you like it now or do you still hate it? I've never had had a real hankering for sweet and sour pork. I do remember it was sweet and sour pork, so. And egg fried rice, I had spent all afternoon. I'd never had egg fried rice, but it was, it was, it was edible, so. <laughs> Despite Robbie's taste buds not appreciating Asian cuisine, somehow they managed to make dating work, and college would take everything to the next level. She went to Georgia and I went to Georgia Tech for you Tech fans out there. Well, Georgia, I, I would root for them until they played Georgia Tech and then I'd play Georgia, root for Georgia Tech. I used to load up my little car and go to Athens every weekend to see her. I can't believe it was in the spring that I had made a deliberate effort to buy a, a, an engagement ring. I got it. And I had this big deal. I got on my knees and asked her to marry me. And she said she wanted to think about it. What do you think of that? I, I knew he was he was good. I knew I loved him. But you know, I just wanted to make sure. So I thought about it for a month. That's terrible, I know. But bless his heart, he didn't go anywhere. He was really patient with me and was right there and was so sweet when I did say yes. So yeah, they married and moved back to Moultrie from North Georgia. Robbie would eventually take a job working with Londa's dad at his funeral home, but it wasn't just a job. It became a ministry. My dad had always been in funeral service. When he uh, was a young man, he went to World War II. Daddy was a foot soldier in Germany, and he was in a foxhole, he and his buddy. They were being fired on by the Germans, and all of a sudden, Daddy told his buddy, we have to get out of this foxhole, man, we gotta get out. His buddy said, man, you're crazy. If we get out of here, you'll get killed. We're being fired on. Daddy said, no, we have to get out now. Well, his buddy would not leave, but Daddy hopped out of the foxhole, ran to another one, and the minute he left his foxhole, it was blown up by a mortar. His buddy was blown to pieces. Daddy uh, was hit by the shrapnel and had a medical discharge from World War II. 
When he came home, he said to my mother, I know what I want to do with my life. I saw so many young men and boys' bodies thrown into a pit, and their families never got to tell them goodbye. Every man, every woman, every child deserves a decent burial. Daddy actually gave away more funerals than he had paid for. We always laugh and say, but it didn't matter to him. I was figuring the other day that I, Mr. Harold and I had about 2,500 funerals over the period of 25 years. And uh, so uh, I got to share Jesus with a lot of folks that I would have never run across I noticed that there was always a common thread of, of ministry in the funeral business. Uh, you, whether you liked it or not, you were doing works that everybody wasn't called, weren't called to, to do. And uh, We felt like the hands and feet of Jesus at the hardest times of their lives, so it was truly an honor. It's a privilege for me to have been able to serve people through the years in, in, in Cockwood County. We have to take a moment to talk about family. Robbie and Londa have three kids, and when Carlton, Catherine, and Marshall arrived, well, that's when life got busy. Softball, tennis, golf, basketball, you know what, just tons of sports? Mission trips to Africa, Honduras, China, youth groups, the Faircloth household was full of life and full of worship. Having those little children grow up and get involved in music and leading worship and worshiping the Lord, all three of them in their families, all three of them uh, worship at their church and away from their church, they just worshipers. And it's exciting to see your, your kids grow up and have meaningful contributions to the body of Christ. Growing up, we had just wonderful family time. Robbie was always playing music, and we just loved to praise the Lord. They, lear they learned to praise the Lord as children. Daddy had this like tape that he would play Christian music, and we'd t turn it up really loud in the kitchen, and he'd get the microphone, and he'd be singing on the microphone, and he'd have us dancing around the table. Literally, we would be dancing around the table and singing. And that's just a sweet, fun memory. And also, just all the times Daddy would be in the car with us teaching um, harmony really loudly. <laughs> in our ears singing it. I don't think Mr. Robbie really liked me until he found out I could sing. <laughs> That's probably true. And they both sing at funerals. One that sticks out of my head, we were on a mission trip. I think I was in 10th grade. I was 16 or 17, something like that. And my our whole family went. And uh, we were walking down to Yasi, which is a mountainside village in Honduras. My dad just starts breaking out in, in song. and. Uh, he didn't speak Spanish, obviously, and the, the people there had no idea what he was talking about, but they could feel the spirit of the Lord. And every two or three words, he would do this. He would say, to the mountains, translate. And it was the, the most beautiful, hilarious thing you'll ever see. One of my favorite memories as a child was going to Heritage with my parents on Saturday nights when we were a baby church. <laughs> and my parents were there. My mom was there to set up like the coffee, the orange juice. My dad would jump on the stage with the keyboard. Yeah. And my brother and sister and I would jump up there and play yeah. other instruments. And I remember playing the drums with plastic spoons before I even <laughs> knew that the Lord made me to be able to do that. Yes. But it was just such a cool memory of like, being on the stage with my yes. dad, just jamming. And those moments are not only special, yeah. they're deep, they mean so much more. Yeah. When we all get together, you, me, Carlton, Tripp, Marshall, Ruthie, it never fails, it never fails. A worship session is going to break out. Mr. Robbie's gonna get on the piano, Marshall's gonna play the play the guitar. What better thing to do with your time as a family than worship the Lord? So cool. I love it. That was one of my fondest memories. Yeah. If we're talking memories, now's a great time to mention that I've known Robbie for a long time, but not just as the organ player or the guy at the funeral home. I also knew Robbie as one of the founding fathers of Heritage Church, and it all started with a longing for more of God. In the early 90s, we began to be involved in Bible studies that Sylvia Evans led. We just began to see the move of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And we really got so close to these people we were in Bible study with. They were just from a lot of different walks of life. And then in 1995, we felt like the Lord was calling us 
to uh, something more. We just wanted more of the Spirit, more of the Lord. We just could not get enough. So there was a group of us that uh, began to talk about a church and felt like God was had a church and did we want to be a part of it. We decided to go that us men were going to do being led of the Spirit to start a new church. And we were planning on about 15 or 20 people showing up, and I think some 100 showed up that first night and the second night. We realized we needed to move and get something larger, so that's when we moved into the our first church over at the uh, Jones, Building. Jones Building. We hoped that we would be able to reach Cockwood County for Jesus the best, you know, through our witness there and out in the community. Anybody could come from all walks of life and be accepted at Heritage, so that's what we were all about. It was just such a sweet time, such an amazing thing to be a part of. The family of God, the local church, and connection with other believers is obviously huge for Robbie and Londa, their kids, and now their grandkids alike. But if we rewind time just a little bit, something happened in 2005 that would require their family and the Heritage Church family to pull together and fight in prayer, to fight for Marshall. When Marshall was a senior of October of 2005, he was out on his four-wheeler about nine o'clock. I had not heard from Marshall. It was completely dark. And then Robbie was at band practice at Heritage at church. And when he came home, I said, I, I don't know where Marshall is. When Robbie went to look for him, he saw the four-wheeler. And the lights were on and it was running. So I let my window down and it was running. And I said, Marshall, come here, Marshall, come here. So Robbie drove through a ditch and then he got out and called Marshall again. He answered me uh, by a groan, and I couldn't tell where that noise was coming from until I really, till I placed it, and it was under the truck, and I ran right over him, but I didn't touch him. So it was you. a God thing. So. so then we called the EMTs, ambulance came. He went to Conquit Regional. They shipped him immediately to Thomasville. He had a brain bleed. He was not coherent, and then he started having almost convulsion-type behaviors, and I heard the strangest voice. I've never heard this voice before, but I heard a voice tell me, your dad died here four years ago on this same day, and your son is going to die too. And I said, my son will not die. My son is under the blood of Jesus and you cannot take him. He will live to glorify the Lord, and he does. Devil's a liar. Devil's That's a liar. That's right. He's a, devil is a liar. God is the truth. His word is the truth. It is powerful. You can stand on it. There are so many verses of scripture from that point on that I claimed over Marshall when I couldn't see, when he couldn't bounce a ball in rehab, and I would just speak scripture over him. It's not what I saw, but by faith, I was claiming the word of the Lord over him. And that's what healed him. I know it was. What the enemy intended for evil, mm. or what could have gone in a totally different direction, the Lord used yes. for good. His hand was on Marshall. Yes. His hand was on my mom. The Lord used it as yeah. a turning point, and my brother's life was yeah. changed through this. And the Lord never left us. His hand, his presence was so near. It's just, it's so beautiful what God can do, even in the darkest of situations. He is so good and he is so faithful. God is faithful in the good and in the bad, in the miracles and in mourning, God is faithful. It's all about him. So I had to ask Robbie and Londa, what does God mean to you? To me, God is everything. He's my best friend, he's my comforter, he's that voice, he's a protector, he's definitely a redeemer, he is a provider. He is everything that I've ever needed for every situation. He's our helper, he's uh, like she said, he fills our every need. And, and uh, there's a scripture that says, I'll lift mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. 
rely on the Lord. He's there to help you. He wants you to he wants to become the air in your lungs. He is faithful. He is faithful through any yes, storm, through any trauma. God is faithful. I, I believe that there are so many times that Robbie's gift of worship and praise has taken us right into the presence of the Lord. Whether it was a good time in our lives or a really traumatic time in our lives, Robbie would go to the piano and sing, just start singing praise songs from his heart. In the Bible, the worshipers were put in front of the army when they were going into battle because that took them into the presence of the Lord. So many times his gift of worship here for our family has carried us through battle after battle. And God is faithful. He never fails. We can trust Him no matter what it looks like. It ain't easy, but it's worth it. Follow Jesus. With one voice, a thousand generations sing. Well.